time for some queer magic, y'all. Today on Live and Queer. Welcome to Live and Queer, QCC's Queer Art Show. I'm your host, Maya Chinchilla, and today we have Vin Seaman and Edgar Fabian Frias from Diamond Wave on the show. If you don't know who they are, Diamond Wave produces They Friend, a non-binary performance festival. You got a little taste in the intro with one of Edgar's pieces from last year, and we'll give you a little bit more later on in the show. But before we get to Diamond Wave, we have some other queer magic to show to you. Hang on a sec. Let me see. Focus, focus. Okay. <sighs> Abracadabra! Hocus focus! Abracapocus! Oh, now for the big finale. Hocus Padabra! Oh, 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 oh okay. Oh, All right. Wow. All right. Oh, We're good. Here. It worked. <laughs> yes, Ooh, you made it. You conjured us. <laughs> We're right here for you, Maya. We're right here. Excellent. Excellent. So good to see you all. How are you doing? You're looking fabulous. Thank you. Yeah, we're doing, I'm doing good. Yeah, you're looking fabulous too. <gasps> oh, thank yeah. you. I, you know, just a couple of accessories today, yeah. not too many. <laughs> I feel like I disagree with Coco Chanel that you should put on at least 12 more accessories before leaving. <laughs> I'll be back. Oh, no, wait. We had a show to do. <laughs> All right. But before we get talking a little bit more, let's show a little bit more of Edgar's work. bodied experience there. Um, Edgar, that is not only your performance, but that is your music, right? You put that all of those pieces together. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about your, you have so many themes kind of coming through your work. Tell me about it. Yeah, definitely. I was so inspired by being a part of the They Friend Non-Binary Performance Festival to really look at my identity through the lens of non-binariness, of gender euphoria and gender expansion. and to bring in some of my ancestral indigenous, indigiqueer, mm. <laughs> indigenous yeah. futurist art into this work. And I made the video, made the sound, and also made the performance. And it was definitely a growth place for me because I okay. don't really perform that much in pe with I don't really perform that much dancing and it was like oh. stretch for me. And so I was really happy to be a part of the festival last year. 
Oh, that's so great. I want to hear more about that. I mean, it just also your, you bringing your full whole self to a space. I, I think that that sounds like a little bit about what they friend is about, but hey, Vin, uh, it's good to see you. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about uh, Diamond Wave and this festival, but I know you also as Kevin. So you're kind of playing with uh, or starting to practice a couple different ways of being called. So can you tell me about that first? Yeah, totally. I feel like we all have multiple ways of being. And this is just acknowledging that I'm segueing from something towards something else. And so we're using Vin now as a primary first name for myself. Um, okay, so I'm, we're gonna do Vin today. <laughs> yeah, let's do it, why not? Okay, all right. Yeah, and um, let's see, I'll tell you a little bit more about Diamond Wave, which is um, a fiscally sponsored project of Intersection for the Arts. We're a queer arts organization. Okay. Bayfriend is one of the programs we run. We also have the Masculaneous series, which is really aimed at shifting, changing, and creating a space to question queer masculinities. Uh, and then we also operate the Artist Adaptability Circles in collaboration with Emerging Arts Professionals, Somarts Cultural Center, MACLA, La Pena Cultural Center, and a whole bunch of funders Ooh. that are also on board with that as well. That's so great to pull in all those different spaces just mm -hmm. to, yeah, I mean, what do you think Diamond Wave's role is in this sort of queer arts ecosystem? Yeah. Like, what are you trying to do? What's your goals? Well, Jesus, deep, hard-hitting questions, Maya. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> um, I, really, I want to know. Well, I really see us, you know, Diamond Wave is really founded in this idea that everybody is a diamond, but we might not know it yet. And so really, I feel like mm -hmm. our role is to um, cultivate diamonds and share that with other people. I think a lot of people might not know that they're diamonds. They might see themselves as squares, but just by shifting that a little bit, you create those diamonds. And so that's what we're really here to do Aww. is to get more people on board with progressive, inclusive values and queer liberation towards creating um, creating more space that can center historically marginalized folks, making sure that we've got folks of color, BIPOC, that are centered within our programs, but then creating a space for every, everyone to participate. That's so beautiful. And Edgar, what, what does it feel like to participate in a, in a space like this? Is it new to have some of this, you know, energy be centered in this way? Yeah, it's so special to be able to connect with other non-binary artists and especially BIPOC non-binary artists. Last year, it was so profound to really see how much we were bringing in our ancestral lineages, how much we were also exploring the emergence of our identities in relation to culture, in relation to ourselves and one another. It was so profound and really validating to be a part of the experience as an artist. Yeah, and I think, you know, this idea of of pushing the gender binaries and, you know, this language, there's lots of different languages in, in multiple cultures and it's not something really, some, maybe some people it's new for them, but there are it, all kinds of cultures. We have like third genders or, you know, other kind of spectrum experiences, but you're, it looks like with these pieces and these, these um, different programming events, you're trying to just give us space for that, for that exploration. I mean, how has that been? I mean, that that really choosing to do this work, Vin, like what is what does that mean for you? Uh, number one, it's exhausting. Anyone thinking about running an <laughs> arts organization, like be prepared to like put a lot of yourself into it. Um, but I also really love it. It's extremely rewarding. Um, I feel like through They Friend specifically, you know, that program was really created because there wasn't a space like this. I feel like there's um, little bits and pieces of other um, performances, other nights that happen that are about non-binary identity, but I wanted to create something bigger that was a festival. And so last year we started pretty small. We had two nights at Bravo's Cabaret with our three featured artists. Edgar, um, of course, was one of our featured artists. And then we also worked with Lotus Boy, um, who is now actually Ooh. Diamond Waves program associate. They're on staff with us now, working with us. Okay. As well as Peekaboo, who is an amazing musician. Um, interdisciplinary oh, wow. musician. So that was last year's yeah. featured festival. This year we're expanding it to make it even more of a festival um, that is going to be happening throughout San Francisco. We've got 23, I think 23 or plus um, different non-binary artists that will be part of this year's presentations. That's so beautiful. And um, 
Do you feel like there are some either non-binary aesthetics that you're discovering or that you are seeking out or, or that you're uncovering and bringing all these artists together? You, either one of you want to jump in on this? I think one thing I've noticed is that non-binary people love being expansive in terms of their like mediums and disciplines and themes and concepts. Like we love just pushing boundaries. And so I've been, you know, really inspired to see the ways that people show up and how they explore art. And I feel like for a lot of us, we're hungry to see that representation. As you said, this identity is not new. But I feel like a lot of people are really finally feeling like the space and the mm -hmm. safety to be able to identify in this way. And so we're hungry to see each other and to learn from each other. I think one thing that I would add to that, um, and this is actually, I'm going to quote Lotus Boy here, who was speaking about their own practice, and they identify as an anti-disciplinary artist. They're not limited to one discipline. Ooh. That is all over the place, mixing and matching whatever <laughs> pieces that we choose. And I feel like that's so fitting for non-binary artists to get to say, I'm not here, I'm not there. I am all of these things all at once. Um, mm -hmm. So I think make, making space for that and planning performance festival that um, creates that space for bleeding through whatever you want um, and specifically this year, I'm really excited because we're going to be doing things in nightlife venues. We're doing things, we're doing an evening with KQED, which will be a more formal performance. Edgar is also mm. going to be hosting a performance panel um, in, collaboration, in collaboration with the San Francisco Public Library. So we've got different types of performance events with all different types of performance and all different types of okay. non-binary people. Okay. So would you say then that, like, do you think that, like, Sailor Moon or Dungeons and Dragons, does that inform your aesthetics in any way? I mean, I know you're a little bit of a fan of those too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what, what kinds of uh, influences do you bring in? Yeah, sure. I mean, first of all, is Sailor Moon non-binary? Oh, Hard -hitting great question. question. I mean, Sailor Moon is definitely a fan, but also okay. of like, has some masculine elements, I think, to them as well. Mm -hmm. Just like the moon that shifts and change from full to waxing waning. Um, I feel like Sailor Moon is a bit of a non-binary person, but definitely a fan. Mm -hmm. So definitely the subtext there. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, and allows for it. I feel. I feel like just the whole cartoon itself. There's the transformation element. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, in a yeah. Um, in my T Shack performance, they used to do a T Shack Star Search, and I did a whole performance that was about a Sailor Moon transformation, where LOL McPherson, my drag persona, transformed. Um, to help save the city from gentrification. It didn't work though, sadly. Oh, okay. Well, maybe you need to do it again. <laughs> do it a couple so. times. <laughs> I think that's how magic works. I don't know. Yeah. Edgar, you know a little bit more about magic and conjuring and, you know, and all these aesthetics that you bring into some of your work. Um, what, you know, what, what informs your work? I mean, I, I also have, I've heard that um, that you're a fan of Ghost Rider. So is that also, you know, underbed, uh, you know, PBS kids? Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, I am pretty multidisciplinary. And also I love the anti-disciplinary and feel like I'm influenced by internet culture, by like queer aesthetics, Ooh. psychedelic culture, uh -huh. indigenous culture. And also I love the word mutant. And it's, it's a mm. word that I really like self or myself with as a mutant and yeah. it really allows for this beautiful dance to happen between different aesthetics and art practices and I'm definitely a sponge <laughs> and I feel like I pick up a lot of stuff Ooh. from all over the place and let it kind uh -huh. of filter through my system. Uh, I love that. I love the sponge. Uh, it's very sexy to me. I don't know why uh, right now I'm having, um, I'm feeling attracted to a sponge right yes. now. Um, <laughs> wear pants inside, I get it. Right. Right. Wear pants. <laughs> yes, exactly. Filling out those pants. Um, so how do you, how do you define a uh, non-binary identity in general? It's, it's got so many parts to it and so many influences from, from cultures, um, that are, you know, from before times, before our times, 
but how do you you know how do you tell people about about what this is when who people who are actually open to learning i feel like um we, we we know binary gender we know male and female i feel like it's been you know drilled into us since even before we're born so i feel like it's not important to define these two points on this you know spectrum of gender um but what i think is important is to realize these are just two points amongst an infinite possibility of things and so why would I, why would we limit ourselves to these two finite things when this expansive idea of gender exists that we get to inhabit yeah. and shift and change and um and have a relationship with. So for me, I think non-binary identity is letting go of this one thing and accepting the plurality of our own gender identities. Yeah, I feel like it sits somewhere in the space for myself as being ancient and emergent. And mm -hmm. I love that people get to self-define. I think that's something yes. that a lot of us have really not had. You know, as mm -hmm. Ben was saying, that a lot of us have been told like what gender is supposed to look like. And so to be able to self-ordain, to be able to self-define is so important. And also we're artists, we're creatives, we're creating culture, we're creating what it means to be non-binary in this moment. And I think that's why I love art and culture so much because it is a space of possibility. It is a space where we can dream things into existence. Yeah, absolutely. With so much challenge in the world and so much, uh, you know, reality, we do need to be able to imagine our own world. And again, the freedom of choice, you know, yeah. allegedly that's what this country is is supposed to be interested in, um, being able to have that freedom. So that's that makes a lot of sense to me. What, what role do you um, non-queer allies can they play in supporting mm. queer art or non-binary art like how can we bring them in or how can we you know help them um be better allies i think for me it's always the first thing is show up buy a ticket get that butt in the seat invite a friend um i was recently talking with someone yesterday who was saying like is are there still things happening it seems like since post pandemic stuff's not happening i don't see the kind of like queer culture bubbling up and i have to say it's always happening it's never going anywhere it will always be here but i think yeah. people are so immersed in the cost and the labor of creating work that sometimes it's more difficult to get the message out um, so with less funds and less ability to maybe mark it out and spread that widely, it's so critical right now that we have allies that are watching what we're doing, that are sharing with their friends, that are helping to boost and broadcast signals and buying tickets, donating to, to support what we're doing. Um, so that's my, my part is like show up and um, show up both physically, financially um, and support wise, however you can. Yeah, and Edgar, I think you've also mentioned to me that you there's an, a mental health aspect of this, you know, that is really important to you that, you know, not only the queerness and magic and culture, um, and you are also in conversation with other artists. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, so I'm also a licensed uh, marriage and family therapist here in the state of California. Oh. And I, yeah, and I, um, aside from being an artist, I also have a practice and I feel like art and mental health are really interconnected where um, mm. I do feel like a lot of people, especially our allies, like are also suffering under the oppression mm -hmm. of heteronormativity and yeah. patriarchy. Oh, yeah. And I think that's one thing I would really say is that, you know, I'd love for allies to understand how interconnected we are and how much our liberation is interconnected and also our oppression is interconnected. And so I think that's something I really want to name as um, an important thing to take away is that we can really use art as a medium to transform awareness, consciousness, culture in general. And that's so, so deeply needed, especially in the times that we're living in where there is so much transphobic law mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. rhetoric being espoused by other people. And would you say that um, if you were an element like a la Captain Planet, uh, which element would you choose and why? So hard. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a Gemini and I feel like that's one of the things uh, that makes it hard. So I would say air because of Gemini, just because, hey, I'm an air sign. And I also really mm -hmm. love heart just because I feel like heart is spirit, it's essence. And mm -hmm. as a witch, I'm like, yes, give me heart magic. <laughs> I feel like everybody 
always shits on Mati and Hart, and I feel like it's like the most critical element. And Edgar, I feel like I totally pin you as a Hart person. I'm just Thank you. bringing all of that warmness <laughs> and that kind of like space to hold other people. Thank you, Ben. Yeah, that really comes through when you talk, for sure. And I, I can only imagine what an awesome uh, therapist you would be or to have, and you know. So Thank I don't know you. if you got any appointments open, <laughs> <laughs> but. I'll be calling you maybe. <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> but yeah, so you do a, um, do you also do another talk show podcast um, situation about mutants or I'm talking about more about witchcraft? What's that about? Yeah, so I, on my YouTube channel, I have a series called Mutant Musings and I've been connecting with artists, creatives, witches, all sorts of cultural creators. And I think a big part of the reason I started it was because I am really witnessing how much culture is shifting in so many different ways. And I really want to create a space for creatives, for folks who are engaged in culture to be able to just speak about it and speak about how they're contributing and also what they're noticing too. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. I love that. Um, I, that's so such important work, and and that you also have that playful element and creative element too. Because all of those stories you're hearing, I can imagine you have to kind of figure out a way to process them and put them somewhere. Yeah. So yeah, art is definitely a resource. It's definitely a sanctuary, a space to process emotion and to also play and imagine too. So yes, it can all live together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I really saw in the the. Um, festival performances that people just really enjoyed you taking up that space too. <laughs> like it's so sweet and so fun. And I could just imagine hearing some of that music and just, you know, really letting go of, of, of like language and and worry and everything. So Edgar at one point had, I think like a flag reveal for your dance during the performance and people lost it. What? People <laughs> lost it. It was amazing. <laughs> It was so much fun and I feel like people could feel how much fun I was having. So I was like, yes, yes, let's all have fun together. And people were like, I wish I could stand up and dance with you. And I'm like, okay, next time I perform, we're all gonna dance together. <laughs> That's amazing. I love it. I can't wait to see the next festival. And Vin, I mean, you have a history with, mm -hmm. with QCC. I mean, I saw you in a workshop uh, helping other artists uh, learn about grant writing. Yeah, and yeah. From many many years ago to now i mean you do so many different things what's that trajectory been like and tell me if there's any uh, well is there any gossip or any uh you know w what kind of uh behind the scenes qcc from then to now yeah. can you tell us well there's <laughs> always there's always <laughs> queer cats queer cats <laughs> even more so right yeah but I love it. Okay, so but speaking of spaces, um, what's special or important about non-binary centered spaces? Like what 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 does that look like for you and what has that what would what are you imagining it looks like? What does it look like presently? Are there other spaces that you can call upon? Um, I don't think there's any physical dedicated permanent non-binary space in San Francisco or maybe the Bay Area. There's not a you know, non-binary art center or anything like that. Um, so I feel like it's very fleeting to have that type of space. Um, and so that's really why we wanted Bayfriend, why I founded Bayfriend and why I feel like it's gotten such momentum over the past couple of years is because there's not something else like this. Um, I think there's segments and, and other things that happen. I know that Om Nom Nom, non-binary burlesque, does a really fantastic show that happens at Amato's very frequently. I think there's mm. other non-binary things that are popping up. But really, this space for me is about creating, um, it's about creating a container that is both free and full of gender. That it's none of the genders and all of the genders simultaneously. And it's that space for people to be able to connect with each other. This year, we're going to have a happy hour at, o at Oasis. We're doing a party at El Rio to make sure that it's not just about sitting and watching performance happen, but there's opportunities for people to come together because there are so few opportunities for folks to join together and to find new non-binary community that's not rooted in either um, you know, a femme lesbian space or it's rooted in a um, masculine gay space. So what is that like non-binary space? I feel like also there's trans spaces that exist as well, so many, but that's also yeah. with these other elements. So how do we how do we create something new and something different that can honor the gender full and gender free people that we are? 
Yeah, and it looks like there's probably a lot of cross crossover in some of those spaces and, and ways that, you know, we kind of move between some of the, those spaces as mm -hmm. well. And I think before um, I heard of Diamond Wave, I, I saw you not only performing and, and entertaining, but asking these kinds of questions about masculinity, yeah. confronting, you know, these these kinds of questions um, and maybe it makes it more um, of a fun conversation even though there's these are hard conversations um, specifically around gender masculinity and also whiteness and and, yeah. and our relationship to um, you know the land that we are currently um, guests on absolutely we um, so the other program that we're in masculineous is really geared towards that and creating fun and unique opportunities for people to engage with gender through creativity I'm really excited Edgar is actually going to finish us up this year on November 7th is going to be hosting the rainbow visionaries workshop it's an online workshop that Edgar is going to be talking oh. through um, how to kind of start your own practice with um, divination and specifically that in relationship Ooh. to gender that was the that's the event that you were telling me about right that's yeah. just a, a newer event okay so that's you have some uh that'll be being put out into the world and we'll be able to participate in that and support that yeah yeah that's great yeah have, i'm really excited yeah i love talking about divination and all okay. its different permutations and how it informs our practice because as an artist i definitely work a lot with divination and so i love to invite okay. other non-binary queer and trans folks into the um, practice because i feel like it's been so informative and so supportive for my own practice as an artist too <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on the show, Vin and Edgar. This has been an amazing conversation. I can't wait for everything that we've talked about today, the festival, all the workshops, everything. But speaking of They Friend, you can join uh, Vin and Edgar at this year's They Friend happening November 16th through 19th at venues throughout San Francisco. Check out diamond-wave.org or follow Diamond Wave on Instagram at Diamond Wave Arts. You can also follow Vin at Femme Masculine and Edgar at Edgar Fabian Frias on Instagram. Or Edgar Fabian Frias one or Edgar underscore Fabian Frias. No, don't encourage them. No, do not fall for the scammers. I do not DM people. Oh my God, I'm sorry. I, I feel like I'm, I'm like, there's different Edgars and they, you're all <laughs> around them are us. Me. So. There's only one Edgar Fabian Frias on Instagram. <laughs> Okay, we'll make sure to put the correct links in the description. And if you like this show, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to us, too. It really helps a lot with the algorithmic overlords. <laughs> 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 All right, that's it for our show today. We're going to poof on out of here and leave you with the sizzle reel for They Friend. See you next time. in the